you'll get on with the second part and hopefully the, the final steps of putting our TR switch together. Could this scene take place in your household? Hey, Mom. Oh, Mom. You know about that radio that went dead this morning? Pop said he'd fix it tonight. Well, he did. Our radio's in a worse mess than, in it, than the alarm clock was when I went to work on it. Good day, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. If you're enjoying the series, please subscribe. We could really use the support. That would be great. And uh, we're going to move on with the construction project of our TR switch for the DX60B transmitter and uh, HR10B receiver. Um, I have not done much since uh, our last uh, our last update. I've just done a little bit more mechanical work, and we talked a little bit about power and um, putting uh, some lights on the front. And that's kind of sort of what I've done in the meantime. I put three LEDs on the front of the case here. I'm not sure if you can see them or not. One is green, one is blue, and one is red. The green one will tell me power is on. The blue one will tell me the trans uh, the receiver is active. And the red one will tell me when the transmitter is active. So it's status lights. It tells me what's going on, lets me know power is on so that there's no, no mistakes. Um, one of our users asked about a schematic, and I'm not necessarily immediately going to have time to draw this out, uh, but I think I can't explain enough to, to wet your whistle and get you going and uh, so that you understand what's, what's going on. So let's take a, uh, a look at the schematic of the power supply that I've elected, elected to use. It's extremely easy. So we'll look at that first, and we'll come back here. Okay. This is a schematic of the uh, simple power supply that I've chosen to use. Our AC input comes from the 8.3 or whatever the voltage is there, approximately from the doorbell transformer that had my junk box. We've got four 1N914 diodes in what's called a full way bridge rectification configuration. And we have a capacitor, which I'm electing to use 470 microfarads at 50 volts, which will give us uh, somewhere between 12 and 13 volts output. Now, if you notice, there's a, a an equation at the top of the screen. This is kind of a handy equation. Write it down uh, if you're not great at remembering things. If you have an AC transformer and you want to know if you pump the output of the AC transformer through a full wave bridge rectifier and you want to know how much DC you're going to have, that's the equation. So, you know, eight, say 8.2 times 1.44 will tell us how many volts DC are, is going to come out of that uh, rectifier. So that's a very handy little equation uh, to use. But um, the uh, premise of this is simple. This is the positive leave, of course, and since this is a ground, this is a negative. Um, the positive will go to both of the actuation coils on the relays and uh, provide between 12 and 13 volts for them. And once you provide the relays ground, they will, of course, actuate. And the ground will be provided by the uh, relay that's inside the transmitter, the secondary contact uh, that I had showed you in an earlier video. So it's very, very simple. Um, so we're taking our, our doorbell. AC output of eight, eight odd volts, uh, converting it through a full wave bridge rectifier, uh, filtering it with a small capacitor, running it to the relay, and when we provide ground from the other relay inside the DX60, away the relays will go and they will close. Um, and that works with the, the microphone. When you, when you pull the trigger on the microphone, uh, this whole system comes into play. So let's go and take a look at how I've got this set up on the bench. Okay, let's compare this to see to what we just saw in the schematic. We've got our uh, transformer. We've got two black wires coming out the eight volt tap uh, of the transformer, which are the two screws here. And we've got four diodes. It's pretty dark. I don't know if you can see them. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. The ground of this full wave uh, diode configuration is right here on this pin, center pin of the terminal block, which is also chassis ground. I've removed the paint underneath where that's bolted down so that our ground is right in the chassis. This is our filter cap. 
that goes from ground, which is also the center terminal of this terminal, to the positive output lead, which is here. You can see the red wire is attached. This is our, our voltage output. And if you follow the red wire around, it goes to one of the coils on the relay, and another red wire runs, runs around to this coil on the relay on this side. So we now have to bring, in order to actuate the relays, they'll need to have ground. They'll need to be grounded. And that's where this, the secondary switch inside the transmitter kicks in. So here's my one ground wire here. It comes around to the other terminal on the relay to give, bring ground. And this will connect to the receiver. So when you ground that wire, it will actuate both of these relays. So with this power supply portion all done, what I like to do is set up and measure the voltage output of the uh, rectifier while it's on and do a, a, do a live test. I mean, we've not wired up any of the switching action of the relay, but we can see if the uh, power supply works and uh, the relay is closed, we can provide a ground. So that's exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, so uh, we're just going to turn on some power here. And if you're following along, usual cautions pre prevail. You uh, do stuff like this, and you're following along. You do so at your own risk. I've got 120 volts fed to this transformer um, without a lot of protection. So uh, kids don't do this at home, I guess. That's the, uh, that's the warning. So we've got power going to it. Uh, we don't, we're not letting any of the magic smoke out, so that's good. So what we want to do is we want to check the voltage output of the rectifier. And uh, of course, this center terminal is also ground. So we're going to go on here and pardon me, I'm working around the camera. Let me just see if I can get onto it here now. Not doing a very good job of it. Here we go, 12.8 volts or so. That's plenty of voltage. So next, we'll uh, clip a ground on here, and when I provide ground to that wire, we should hear the relays go. Hopefully you can hear the relays go. Hopefully they go. I haven't tested it yet, so this is new. Oh yeah. Hopefully you can hear that. That's good. Okay, so we know that our, uh, our baseline power circuit is working. I'm just going to turn this off before I get a shock, which wouldn't be fun. Um, so our baseline uh, uh, power supply is working, and we know when our transmitter gives us ground here, it's going to close up these relays. So really, the next thing to do is really to begin wiring. Um, I've got a lot of wiring to do uh, on this back panel here. Actually, it's going to go around this way, bring in the AC and bring all, in all the switching. Um, I have got, uh, I showed in the opening uh, credits here that I've put uh, a couple of indicator lights on the front case. And I'm using some nice little nuts and bolts to hold this together rather than self tapping screws. So the, uh, I don't know if you could see that. I wasn't looking at the camera, but I'm looking now. Again, nice little nuts and bolts there to hold this together rather than the terrible self-tapping screws that it came with. So every time I replace some of those self-tapping screws, the case gets a little better. I also drilled holes in the center here that are going to pass through the uh, this uh, frame right here because the bottom is a little saggy with all the weight and transformer on it. So that strengthens that up some. So uh, again, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to start wiring and uh, I'll get... Uh, uh, I'll uh, come back with updates. Okay, let's go over uh, some of the wiring I've done. This is the basic relay wiring I've done so far. <coughs> relay switching, that is, this time. So, uh, this is the main TR switch for the receive transmit. I have on this wire, we'll be connecting to the antenna port. This wire will be connecting to the transmitter port, and this wire will be connecting to the receiver port, and this wire down here is the signal wire for the TR switch that comes from the DX60B. So, when 
you're in receive mode and you're not powering these relays, signal will come in the antenna. And the, essentially, the antenna is the movable wiper switch inside this relay. It will pass signal to the receiver port. But when you apply 12 volts to the coil by grounding this, the, the antenna switch will flip to the transmitter port. So very simply, no, uh, no relay activation. The signal gets passed the, to the receiver port, activate the relay, the signal connects up with the transmitter. So that's really very, very simple. So that's the uh, two sets of contacts on this side of the relay. On the other side of the relay, all I've done is I've added an extra ground wire here that when it goes into transmit mode, the receiver port gets grounded out. And I said that was uh, so that I could safely use an SDR radio uh, with this unit. So that's what this uh, loop back wire here is. It's gonna, when uh, it goes into transmit mode, the receiver port gets grounded. Now over here on the secondary relay, I have these two wires that you can see here now. The red one is normally closed and normally open. And all it does is switch a ground that when it's when the, the relays are not active, the red wire gets the ground. When the relays become active, the black wire gets the ground. And that I can switch an amplifier or I could have a secondary receiver on a long wire that I could switch the uh, uh, into standby mode. So I thought that was kind of handy. And of course, I've got my fuse and my uh, strain relief here. I would, haven't kicked up, uh, connected up yet. So what I've also got here is I've got a power wire that goes to the wiper switch or the moving switch uh, contact on this relay. And this is going to switch between my two diodes, between receive and transmit. So that's going to give me a signal about what's going on inside this box once I close it up. So the next thing I have to do is start putting the panels on and wiring up the back side and wire up the front side. And uh, I think I'll do the front and get the lights all rocking and rolling and we'll come back with a test with that next. Well, the front panel, well, the panels are on the back and front, and the front panel is wired on with the LEDs. I've not wired in the back panel completely yet, although I've put one ground. I did bring in the power. Uh, of course, the hot hits the fuse first, always. So we're going to plug it in and uh, just do a check and make sure the LEDs are working. Um, so what we should see is when it powers up, we should see the green one here fire up to tell us that power is on. And it should immediately go into receive mode, which uh, is the blue LED right beside the red one, of course. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so it's plugged in and it's on. And as per expectation, they're showing proper. So let's... Uh, let's actuate it and see if we get a... I have to work around the camera here, and that's not easy. When I ground that, there you go, it goes into transmit mode, and the red LED comes on. And when you take your key off the mic, it goes back into receive mode. That's just bouncing quickly because I'm not affirmatively touching this connector down here. So the LEDs are working good. So uh, next, we got to wire up the back panel. And uh, do a final test and uh, get it into service. Okay, power's on. It's in receive mode. We're going to do some testing after wiring up the back panel. Uh, essentially, the unit is complete other than putting the cover on and making sure the top cover is grounded. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm working around the camera and bumping it again. So I have a continuity meter set up here. I don't know if you can hear it. Hope you can. So the first thing we're going to check now, since it's in the receive mode, I don't know, you can, yeah, you can see the blue light is on. So the antenna port is here, and the receive port is here. I can get on it. There we go. Okay, so that part checks out. Come on now. You can do it. There we go. Okay, so now we should have a ground on the uh, normally closed contact down here. Oh, I heard it. There we go. So that that's okay too. So now we're going to engage the relays, and we're going to check and make sure that 
thing switched over properly. I can get on it. Okay, so now we're in the transmit mode. We should have contact between the antenna port and the transmitter port, which we do. So that worked properly. So now we should have contact between the normally open. And there we go. So now we've confirmed that it's all working correctly. We can safely uh, connect it up to our radio and, and give it a try, which is the next step, uh, really, I guess. Well, I guess I'm going to get the cover on it. I don't really expect there to be any grief. So let's get the cover on it and uh, connect it up to radio and see how it flies. Okay, and let's look and see how this all interconnects. I know there are some uh, newer folks out there that haven't had to do this type of thing, that uh, TR switching was handled entirely by the radio, uh, receive and transmit all built into one box with a TR switch. So let's go through this uh, for everybody, see how this all interconnects. So we have our VFO, we have our transmitter, and we have our receiver, and we have our new TR switch. So the VFO, All wound up here, mates with the uh, accessory plug on the transmitter, like so. This is the signal output of the VFO, and I've changed these up to nice B and Cs, as you can see, rather than the old noisy RCAs. So that's connected. Now, <coughs> the receiver has a plug in the back in its accessory socket with a jumper. When that jumper is connected, the, uh, it's in receive, and the uh, uh, receive standby switch is active on the front, meaning you can manually switch it from receive or transmit. But if you break that jumper, it goes into standby mode. So what I've done is I've rigged up another plug um, for here, and uh, if we go to RX, we'll plug this into that uh, extra set of connectors that uh, we used right there. Oh, and the next thing that we're going to connect up here now, this is the TR signal. That plugs in up here. And we have, I'm not sure which one is which here now. Well, this is, uh, this is for the transmitter. It screws in here like this. And for the receiver, I have also changed it over to some nice BNCs. This is the receiver port here and the receiver port here. And that's it. So uh, you would just connect your antenna. Uh, we're going to turn this around and connect it to a watt meter and a dummy load in a second. But you've got, again, your contacts for... Uh, uh, another receiver, like I have a receiver on a very long wire antenna that I may want to connect, or an amplifier at a later date. Um, so that's it. Um, so when you pull the mic key, um, the antenna will automatically switch ports from receive to transmit. All, I think, fairly simple. Uh, complex compared to, to, to today's radio, but uh, really very not hard to do at all. You can neaten these wires up at some point, but I've just done this for demonstrational purposes. So let's turn this around and see if we can make it work. Well, okay. Everything looks in order. Everything's connected as it should be. Um, and everything's working wonderful. And uh, I've got it in CW mode just so that you can see the meters go and, uh, and whatnot. So when you key the mic, you go to full output and our light changes. Receiver on, standby mode. So uh, it all worked out very well. Um, nice, neat station, all restored and, uh, and ready to have some fun with. So uh, I think that uh, has been a successful journey to this point. Um, so at some point, I'm going to make another uh, video where we get out on the bands and we make some contacts. Um, but uh, we're going to wrap this up for the TR switch. Um, 
Uh, it's also working wonderfully well, uh, which is great. So uh, again, if you're enjoying the series, please take a moment to subscribe. Um, if you've got questions about the TR switch, you can join our uh, Facebook help group, uh, which the link is in the description below. And uh, so I guess we're going to call that close. And until the next one, we'll see you then.